Hi everybody, this is Shah and this is the video on the energy of Libra. What will happen in Libra? But I'm going to bring a twist into it this month as I think it is quite fun uh, to know what Libra represents. Libra is the seventh house in the zodiac. That means that it's the house of marriage. Um, how do you pair up with a partner or in partnership? And this could be marriage, living together in love, or even a, uh, a business partnership. And how are you on one to one, including your enemies and your rivals? How do you handle things? This is also a very beautiful energy because Virgo is a perfectionist, as we know, more so for others than for the selves. But we are going into Libra and we are <coughs> literally going into Libra on the 23rd of September and it will last until the 22nd of October. But generally, you see, 21st of September. To the 21st of October but the moon calendars and the earth keeps on changing the atmosphere keeps on changing so our ca um, calendar or moon when it settles in is changing as well so according to the astrologers uh, that I have researched the moon goes in to a Libra on the 23rd and um, it goes leaves um, in October on the 22nd and Libra craves for peace and harmony now I'm also going to do a reading and um, this is from the pagan uh, deck the pagan ways and from the moon uh, the goddess of the moon oracle so I um, wonder and I'm also using the underneath the t uh, deck the last card as the overall energy remember this is quite a magical time of the year as we are going towards Halloween so it's a very spiritual month as well especially on Halloween when the veil between the two words is very very thin and that's why I'm using the Pagan or the Wiccan deck as also the witches and the ghosts come out, supposedly. Okay, because it is the veil between heaven and earth is so thin. Your, um, your emotions or your psychic abilities or your spirituality might be very thin on certain days especially when we have two full moons and one moon is the blue moon now I don't know the dates precisely I have to check that up like I said the moons and the planets are different everything is changing it might be because of the atmosphere I don't know if you want to know then I suggest you ask an astrologer but we will go officially, regularly, normally, we go into a different sign on the 21st of each month. But this month it is occurring precisely on the 23rd of September to the 22nd of October. Also, we have on the um, 1st of October, we have... Uh, Aries full moon in Libra and on the 16th which will be the blue moon is the new moon and that's the new moon Libra in Libra and also uh, what I have discovered is that Libra stands for kidneys bladders veins and skin so those are the organs that might be more sensitive, the skin, the kidneys, uh, the bladder or the veins. So if you have odd 
uh, um, varicose veins then you might suffer a little bit more around the full moon on the 16th that is my definition or you might uh, you might be drinking a lot more because your kidneys and your bladder is asking for more um, fluids so to clean out your system it's better to drink around two liters a day anyway so get prepared it also means uh, your Libra uh, that you uh, your birth solar return is here so set your intentions for the coming year what this means is that your it is your birthday it is a finishing and there is a new beginning on the day that you have been born so set your intentions and do your wishes especially on the full moon of Libra in Libra and Aries in Libra so that the dates are the 1st of October and the 16th of October that's when the energy will also start changing into Scorpio okay well that's the next sign I'll have to do if you like me doing this okay and this is particularly to a lot of astrologers, astrologers um, the, the Sun sign and the rising sign are more significant than the moon sign okay so watch out uh, Libra the new moon on the 16th in in October because we then um, it will be in regress I also know that mercury uh, will be in retrograde but I didn't go in that far I just stayed with the Libra energy Libra happy birthday and I hope you have a fantastic month and that goes for everybody else my definition a little bit on the character and the energy of Libra is as follow Libra can be obsessive with symmetry and strife to create equilibrium in all areas of their lives Libra is ruled by Venus and Venus means love beauty money Libra does adore all these they also adore art intellect and connoisseur they try to surround themselves with beauty their exquisite uh, exquisite um, they love exquisite things they love refined things they make good designers decorators art uh, art critics or stylists um, advisors in balance like life coaches or social workers they are also organizers their opposite is Aries Libra represents the skin and appears appears physical keep fit they love doing that as well because they want to look good like Leo they love exquisite exquisite uh, exquisiteness I can't say it I get stuck in my words I'm sorry exquisiteness so if you like beauty then they also are more likely to uh, keep fit and be physical because they have that energy after all they are also an air sign the opposite is Aries so that is fire they're active uh, active as well action okay I'm not going into Aries but that is one of their passions is action Libra likes to know boundaries or likes to set boundaries so they can feel safe and in balance and they expect this from their partners as well 
Libra are also people pleasers, so they must remember that their relationship and family comes first, instead of outsiders. <coughs> Excuse me. Libra is a cardinal sign. This means they are great at launching new things because the way the pros and cons try to see all they try to see all the uh, sides and aspects to an outcome of projects. However, the negative side is procrastination. They take long to decide and they take quite a while in making a decision instead of asking advice so they can get a different perspective much quicker. Libras would do well to trust their intuition a little more and if necessary ask for help so their procrastination does not work against them. Libras are also great charmers just like the Geminis <coughs> and Aquarians as they've got the gift of the gap. They can also sell ice cubes to Eskimos, but the gems will beat them, as Libra will be the one at a party or gathering to suss disagreements and disputes, as they take their time to balance each argument, whereas a gem will do that too, but gem sees more sides to one thing. They see things that others don't. That is their two sides. The conscious and the subconscious of their spiritual side as no one has even considered to look at or to understand that the Gemini and Libra that, that way. But Gemini uh, the Gemini and Libra are dual signs and so is Pisces. And if you hear some readers say Pisces is really the most sensitive or the most psychic, I disagree with that because there's two other dual signs and they have their spiritual side. Like with the twin, you don't see the twin literally, but we know they're there, okay? And perhaps one twin is spiritual and the other one is practical. Okay, where spirituality is also thought, so the other one can be thought and practical and earthly, or the spiritual one could be intellectual and spiritual. And it's the same with uh, Libra, I find. They think, and that could be the one scale, thinkers and spirituality weighing off the earthy and the emotions. Libra in relationship. When it comes to relationships, Libra appreciates a high reciprocal dynamic lover or partner. Libra tend to treat the partners like works of art, adoring both their minds and bodies. Libras value, value refined sens sensuality, so even the most flirtatious among them insists keeping the intimacy behind closed doors. Ooh, between the sheets, they are extremely giving, but don't be surprised if they expect you to give more, or rather that you have to earn their gracious giving. These air signs rule the kidneys, the lower back, the skin, the bladder and the veins. Well I won't even go into the balance position. I will leave that to your imagination. Libras head often to rules their heart. Libra's head often rules their heart because they are thinkers. Air, this is more so for the moon Libras and then the sun Libras. 
Libra often searches for someone that will glide with them through life in glorious tandem. Libra moons are adaptable, graceful, charming, diplomatic, easy going and clear thinking. Okay, it's not talking about the rising sign, so it's not the rising sign. Uh, the, the, and this, it's not even talking about the sun sign, but that is the moon sign. And um, what I have found out uh, in the Libras is that the moon sign, according to a lot of astrologers and charts, it, they're talking about the moon sign and the rising sign, and, and not so much the sun sign. The shadow side of a, um, a Libra. They can be self-indulgent and dependent. They see both sides of every situation, which could lead to indecisiveness. They might seem calculating and some people might find their tendency off-putting and annoying. That said, that said, there are people that will abuse the, in, in the Libra of this gift or talent. If Libra is blinded by their love for such a person, they won't see that they are being used or abused. So, you know, it is easily said that people say, well, you're there, you should know, you should be open and be noticing when you're being used or abused. Well, believe you me, if you love somebody, you don't see danger coming because you cipher yourself away. And that is one lesson that we can learn from Libra. Don't cipher yourself away. And Libra, be conscious of not ciphering yourself away so that your goodness, your, your giving and your helping and supporting will not be abused. Know your boundaries. That is the lesson here. It's great to be in love, but be focused and stay focused. So you don't have to weigh everything up. If you start right from the beginning by setting your boundaries, then you'll be fine. Well, my darlings, I, I'm back and now we're going to start with the um, cards. I'm using the Pagan Way because we've got Halloween and we've got also, also the um, uh, second harvest in the calendar of the Pagans or Wiccans. Wiccans, witches, whatever you want to call it, and that's called the Maybon Festival, and that's the Fall Equinox, and that is also known as the uh, Fall Equinox is also uh, sept on September the 21st, and that's the day that usually the calendar says we go into Libra, and it is also known as the Second Harvest, that's when the sun kings descend into the underworld. So that's when the sun goes back into a lower way of shining and it goes down to Australia. <laughs> but it's if you uh, believe in the mythology, then um, this has also got to do with the empress. Um, they go into the underworld, the other world. Okay, of gods and goddesses, and the the empress is also the mother of the um, what was it? That was the mother of Fien. I forgot the name now. Uh, I I've got it in the mythology um, series that I was doing, and I haven't had the time to carry on with that. But her daughter was kidnapped to the underworld by one of the princes or the king and she left for nine months and then she came to an agreement the empress that she would uh, go into mourning and that's the winter and um, uh, when her daughter returns to the underworld and the nine months that is spring summer and autumn 
and that is also the time of a pregnancy. So there you go. This is all intertwined and you can see how the energies interconnect before I start on the cards. And that's how I got involved in the pagan way. You know, and also because my sister's vegan and I don't eat that much meat anymore either. I don't like it. And also this has got to do with moon cycles. The full moon is an ending and then there is a new beginning with the new moon and this repeats itself every single month and that is how we tell time. Then we've got Shahim and Shahim is also a festival in the pagan world and that is also known as Halloween. Now. I'm sorry, I'm trying to find the information. Also known as Halloween, the Festival of the Dead. Third Harvest Festival, announcement of the onset of winter. The celebration of the power of the Dark Goddess, Queen of the Underworld. During this period, the veil between our worlds and the spiritual world is the thinnest. The dead then celebrate the feast together with the living. On this day, apples, pumpkins and pumpkin pie, hazelnuts, cakes are eaten and made for the dead. Another ritual is to be bake is to bake half moon cookies and place them at intersections. Well I didn't know that. But you can make half baked cookies and give them as trick and treats. So now we're going back to the cards. Those are the two festivals, and Charmaine is also known as Halloween. And on um, that was that is on the thirty first of October. So to cup it all, we have Mabane, uh, Mabon. That's the fall. Equinox, the third harvest, and then we are going into autumn in our own uh, calendar. Okay, then on the 31st of October, we go into Halloween, and that's the onset of the winter. So, that is we've got quite a busy month. I have had to redo part of the video, so uh, it's getting dusky now and the days are already getting shorter. So we're going to the cards now. First of all, we have the King of Swords in the first week. This is from the 21st of September to the 28th of September. The King of Swords, you could meet a Gemini, he represents foremost Gemini, but Libra, you could be also meeting a Libra. Anybody could be meeting a Gemini, a Libra or an Aquarius, as they represent the swords. But it's profoundly the Gemini, but you most probably will feel in your element uh, Libra as you are an air sign. Okay. Now, since we are into autumn, some people might have other reactions because when leaves drop, that is when some people get depressed. So don't get depressed. Stay optimistic. Festivities are coming along. Look forward to the festivities and the creativity with making pumpkin soup and pumpkins with the kids and trick or treats. There's loads of fun going to come, even in difficult times. Besides that, the King of Swords also means that you might be seeking advice from uh, somebody from an institution or a municipality. This could be a lawyer, this could be a teacher, this could be a doctor, a surgeon, because he's got the knife. Um, this could also mean uh, judicial issues, even if it's just with regards to a parking fine. So be careful, be forewarned that you might be seeking advice from a professional or perhaps from a father figure that could be an air sign or somebody that is mature and that you respect. 
He will cut straight through to the core to get to the truth, as he represents justice, truth, clarity and honesty, wisdom and communication. He can sell ice cubes to Eskimos. And Libra, you can do that as well, as you are craving for harmony and peace. You will keep the peace because you are the king in your own world. And you will protect those that you love. The second week, that is from the 28th till the 4th of October, you have the Ten of Cups. Then you might be coming together. And Libra, again, happy birthday. This could be really resonating with you, as you hopefully will be re um, celebrating with family and friends. The Ten of Cups means ultimate happiness for everybody. That's the energy in the second week of Libra. Peace and harmony. You might even be expanding the family or you might be getting married. There is a celebration, most probably for everybody else, different. For, for the Libra, definitely their birthday. There's an uh, ending to emotional difficulties and there is a new phase starting. Wow. In the third week, the third week, the 5th to the 11th, we have the Hanged Man. The Hanged Man, he's not hanging upside down like usual, but now he's hanging upright, it's different, it is a Wiccan a pagan uh, card and he's looking down, he's trying to get a different perspective. There might be delays, there might be um, postponements, so you might be postponing a wedding or a get gathering or a meeting or uh, a presentation. Who knows? You're the one that knows that what resonates with you. There might be postponements with uh, celebrations or weddings because there's only allowed a certain amount of people to come together at this moment in time because of the COVID. You are trying to most probably get another perspective on how to fix it. There could be delays for four hours, four days, four weeks or four months. To make the time shorter, meditate, contemplate and evaluate. If you've got a different perspective on something, perhaps you can persuade the crowd to come together much earlier if, with, if they agree with your idea. You might be meeting outside and where there is fresh air, where there is circulation. They will see your point of view that coming together and celebrating is much better for everybody else. Laugh and the world laughs with you. Cry and you cry alone. And that is what you are trying to delay or postpone or avoid. So that you will come to a solution because you can think in uh, Libra time. Libra stands for thoughts. So Libra will get another perspective. It also weighs things off. If I do this, then that will happen. If I do that, then that will can happen like that. If I do it this way, then we can avoid that, that, that and that. We can avoid delays. Because the hanged man is hanging in the tree by his own choice, um, because he's bored and he wants to get an other perspective. That is the mythology behind that. You can see birds flying, so there will be messages flying around and getting a bird's eye view and other perspective. So you are most probably going to stop the postponement or the delay with your idea. This is after meditation or contemplation and evaluation, seeing how to do things differently. You've planted the seeds for a new beginning because you've got the lady here which is the Empress. And she's uh, she's holding her tummy, but I the first time I saw it, I thought she was holding a world ball, the atlas. Yes, you might want the whole world. The world is your oyster, definitely at this time, as time is fertile. 
You might be finding out you're pregnant, and if you don't want to get pregnant, then take precautions. If you're a man, then it's the same thing. If you don't want to become a father, take precautions. This could be a birth of a child that you're hearing of, or of a new project. And I think personally that you've thought of an other way of getting the people together and agreeing with you to get something started off the ground. Investing in something perhaps, and each seed that you sow, you will nurture like a child. You'll make it grow, you'll give it water, you'll give it food until it's fully grown and it's blossoming and then you can pluck the fruit. Like the lady or the empress. The empress also stands for Libra. So we've got a possibility of Libra here. You'll be feeling in your element right at the beginning of Libra on the 21st, 22nd of September and you'll be feeling ultimately happy at the end and I think you will of reached your goal or your wish for harmony and peace and balance definitely you've got an other perspective on other things after all the energy overall this month um, everybody is the magician He's thanking Father Son, as you've got Father Son and Mother Earth, you've got the balance. How magic is that? And also the Magician represents a Gemini, which is also the King of Swords. So you might be meeting a Gemini or a Libra. They are the four most signs in this um, reading. And this goes for everybody. And of course the magician is take action because there's a new beginning. You've got all the elements within you to make it come true. But you have to come into action and make the right decision and the choice. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. You're the one that can make the magic. And you've got one here and you've got 10 here which becomes a 1 so you've got a 1-1 one, one here and a 1-1 one, one here you've got the 3 ones and the same with the Empress so the angels are with you there you go 3 ones I'm sorry about the darkness I'll try to put a light on see whether that improves it a little bit and then we have number one from the dark moon and we've got a blue moon and this moon looks blue as well instead of dark and it's called the void you can see the blue around this around the moon and we do have two full moons and one of them is called the blue moon this is the dark moon the void your time to rest and reset is here release all that does not serve you stop resisting the void is a time of possibility not just darkness there is nothing to fear in letting go or negative of negative patterns and habits so let go of the old <coughs> and like I said Libra in the Libra for you this is your um, ingress uh, time on the 21st as um, you are leaving the old behind and going into the new energy and everybody else this is also a time of letting go because we're going into a new moon we've got the full moon uh, let go there and start making the intentions and the dreams before the new moon so that the new can come in while the moon full attractive power gets all the publicity the dark moon which offers the infinite infinite possibilities of clean slate 
is just as powerful in its own way. The dark moon often looks like a darker piece of the night sky, and in some cultures the way it appears harkens back to the idea of the void. It is a place of unknown secrets and state of everything and nothing, or a place to prepare or rest before moving on. To be personally there is a, relief, a relieving, restful quality about this dark moon that allows pondering and decisions about what we can jet, jettison leave behind before making a fresh plans for the new moon which is the next day. If you find yourself resisting the dark moon it is usually the clear sign that you are being stubborn about letting go of something that is old and not serving you in a positive way any longer. Often it is fear or pattern that was cre created to protect you in some way. However, now is the outdated, yet you are still carrying it or acting it out. Know that this moon is powerful, but it is also incredibly gentle in the way it helps you unravel what actually is so you can embrace the refresh start of tomorrow. Relax and refrain and think about how much better your life will be without that bad habit, fear or a pattern. Get very clear about the possibilities of this transformation and what it will give you in real terms. This is the power of the dark moon. It is the optimum time in the cycle to release the old and cut the cords of relationships and traumas that deserve no time, no energy and attention in your present. So when the full moon is here, before the full moon gets here, relax and let go. So that once the full moon is over, give it between the 21st and the 25th I would say because there's always waning energy about and start setting the intentions between the full and the new moon on the first. Wow this is really exciting and I hope you have enjoyed this month's energy of Libra. I certainly have and I will certainly watch it again. Thank you for watching. Take care. Be blessed and stay safe and please like and share. Thank you.